bathroom. Kia ora, good afternoon everybody. I'll hand over to the Director General shortly to give you the uh, daily update on COVID-19, but before I do that I wanted to make a few introductory remarks. As you'll be aware, uh, the Prime Minister announced yesterday that I'll take on the new, uh, the new role as Minister for COVID-19 Response. Uh, that will give me ministerial responsibility for all aspects of our ongoing response, including our managed isolation facil facilities, our border defences, as well as our health response, including our testing and contact tracing, uh, and the management of any resurgence of the virus. Um, I'm under no illusions about the scale and the importance of that role. Managing COVID-19 is crucial for the health uh, and the well-being uh, of New Zealand and New Zealanders. Um, you've heard me say this many times before, COVID-19 is going to be with us for some time. Since the start of the global pandemic, the total number of cases worldwide is now more than 46 million, uh, with almost 1.2 million deaths worldwide. Yesterday alone, the World Health Organization reported 440,000 new cases uh, and over 5,500 deaths as a result of COVID-19. <clears throat> Sadly, the rate of new infections continues to climb around the world. So it's vitally important that our systems here in New Zealand are as robust as they can be. That's why we've put such an effort and resource into keeping the virus contained at the border through our managed isolation and quarantine facilities. We will continue to treat everybody arriving in New Zealand as if they have COVID-19 until they have demonstrated that they don't. We have rigorous infection prevention and control measures in place for anybody who has contact with recent returnees and a program of regular testing. And that system is working. This latest case of a worker at the Sedema Airport managed isolation facility in Christchurch was tested last Thursday as part of regular testing uh, and they returned a negative result. They subsequently developed symptoms, got tested again and they returned a positive test result yesterday. That means we've got a very small window of time when they were potentially infectious. Our contact tracers are already on the case, ensuring that we can contain this case and limit any spread from it. And I want to thank that worker for seeking out the test, even though they had been tested just days earlier. It's a reminder to us all, if we start to develop symptoms, get a test as soon as possible. It's also a reminder to everybody to keep good records of their movements and their contacts. An alert has been sent to people who signed in with the app at the Beckenham Countdown on Sunday. Please keep scanning with the app. It only takes a few seconds, but it does give our contact tracing team a real head start when they need it in cases like this. COVID-19 is a tricky virus. No matter how good our systems are, we will see cases emerge from time to time. The key is to identify them early, to contain them, and we have done that several times in recent months. Given this latest case at the Sedema, we're also delaying the release from managed isolation of the Russian fisheries crew, and the Director General will comment more on that in a moment. Before I finish, uh, two further things. I want to note that from today, it's compulsory to hold a managed isolation and quarantine voucher in order to board a flight to New Zealand. This will help us more easily manage the numbers coming into the country uh, to match the capacity in our managed isolation facilities. Demand for space in those facilities is currently very high, and we're anticipating higher than usual demand as we continue the run-up to Christmas. This may indeed mean that some people need to rearrange their travel to fit with the times that we have available in managed isolation. I know that will be disappointing for some people and for their families, and there is a pr uh, provision for people to apply for dispensation to travel in an emergency, but I do want to reiterate that the bar for that is very, very high. In the end, though, we have a responsibility to ensure that anyone entering New Zealand can do so safely, both in their interests and in the interests of New Zealanders. Our managed isolation system is serving us well, keeping the virus at the border. Uh, and from Friday, when I become the Minister for COVID-19 officially, um, I'll continue to do everything in my power to ensure that it uh, continues to do just that. I want to end on some good news today. Uh, today I can officially report that the Auckland, uh, the August Auckland outbreak cluster is now closed. 
the cluster involved 179 cases, 2,563 close contacts, uh, and 261,130 tests. Because of the phenomenal efforts of everyone, not least the health sector staff, Auckland is now back to enjoying the freedoms that we all enjoy at Alert Level 1. But we are not at Alert Level none. In Auckland and across New Zealand, we need to keep using the COVID Tracer app. We need to continue to uh, use protective measures like washing our hands, staying home if we're unwell, and getting a test if we have symptoms. It's important that we stay vigilant, that we protect ourselves, our whānau, and our communities. I'll now hand over to the Director General. Thank you, Minister. Kia ora koutou katoa. So today there are five new cases of COVID-19 to report. Four of these are at managed isolation facilities. One is in the community, and this is the case related to a managed isolation that we first reported on last night and is formally included in today's total. I will provide more detail on that case shortly. Uh, of the other four cases we're reporting today, all are in quarantine at our Auckland quarantine facility. One case arrived on the 19th of October from Kabul via Dubai and tested positive at around day 12. Another case, the second one on the 21st of October from London via Doha and Brisbane and has tested uh, positive at around day 12. Third case arrived on the 29th of October from the USA via Sydney and has tested positive around day three. And finally, our fourth case arrived on the 29th of October from the USA via Doha and Brisbane and has tested positive at around day three. I should note that, as you will have heard, the first two of those cases that tested positive around day 12. Uh, we, are now have a pro we now have a protocol where we look at each of these cases appearing in managed isolation to look uh, at anything that could indicate that these are uh, older cases. We're obviously very interested in any cases first being detected at day 12 to rule out any possibility of cross-contamination in the facility, and we will be routinely investigating and reporting on what we find with each of the cases. There are indications like a high CT value from their original test, and we will also be doing serology routinely to help us build a picture and rule out any cross-contamination inside the facility. Eleven cases are now considered recovered, and that means our total number of active cases is 75. Our total number of confirmed cases that we report to the World Health Organisation is 1,612, and yesterday our laboratories completed 2,455 tests for COVID-19, reflecting the tests that were actually taken uh, on Sunday but processed mostly yesterday on Monday. Further information about uh, the case that we announced last night related to managed isolation and subsequently detected in the community. So this uh, person is a member of the health team at the Sedema Christchurch Airport managed isolation facility where the international mariners are in managed isolation and for those who have confirmed infection in the quarantine wing of that hotel. The individual was tested as part of routine testing for staff in the facility and, as the Minister has said, returned a negative test on Thursday the 29th of October. On Saturday, the person developed symptoms, early symptoms, and did seek a further test on Sunday with a positive re result received yesterday. The person is now in isolation. Uh, there is one household contact who is a student at Kashmir High School. That person has been tested once and returned a negative test already. As a close contact, they will remain in isolation for the full 14-day period and be tested again at around day 5 and day 12, which is part of our standard close contact procedure now. So today, parents, caregivers and staff at Kashmir High have received a letter around the contact. As advised in the letter, uh, members of the school community do not need to be tested unless they have any symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, as per routine guidance, they are also not required to self-isolate. The community and public health team in Christchurch will be in touch with the school if there is any change to that situation. Otherwise, it is business as usual at the school today. Have been asked why this person and their household contact are self-isolating at home uh, following assessment of their um, situation by the local medical officers of health. So the public health team is checking in on the person and their household can contact daily. The individual, who's the case, remains well with very mild symptoms 
and that person is of course able to call health staff at any time. Other staff at the isolation facility who may have worked on the relevant shifts are also in the process of being contacted and tested as a process uh, as appropriate if they had or not already been tested in the last day or two through the routine testing that happens there. Uh, likewise, public health staff in Christchurch are continuing to work with the team at the Beckenham Countdown where the person visited. As you would have seen already reported, the supermarket has undertaken a deep cleaning and video footage is continuing to be reviewed just to assess if there is any potential that uh, the case when they were there and potentially infectious had any uh, interaction with both with either staff or other customers. Uh, through our COVID uh, tracer app, we have sent out a push notification to people who had logged on uh, and been in the supermarket or logged in and been in the supermarket at a similar time to when the person visited. An important reminder for us all to keep using the app. Uh, there were less than 20 people who had uh, scanned in uh, and I think we can and should be doing better than that. So again, an opportunity to encourage people. You never know when or where that information will be useful. Please do continue to use the app. Uh, anyone who is uh, concerned about the uh, update today can of course contact Healthline for advice and if necessary, particularly if they have symptoms, uh, getting a test. There is plenty of capacity for testing in Christchurch. They have two community-based assessment centres and, and good support from local GPs. Demand for testing has already increased. That has been monitored and additional testing capacity will of course be stood up if uh, there is any need. The positive test for the staff member also means that the first of the international mariners who are due to complete their managed isolation this morning have had their stay extended for at least 24 hours as an additional precautionary measure and while we get a full picture of the situation. Further genome sequencing of another eight international mariners who have tested positive as amongst those who are in that hotel has shown there are three different uh, lineages of the COVID-19 virus. And when we combine the results from the previous genome sequencing of 11, the first 11 infections there, we can see that none of the lineages has been seen in cases in New Zealand prior to the arrival of this group, and all are consistent with overseas infection. There was one similar genome sequence found in an individual who also travelled to New Zealand from Russia, uh, and who arrived here on the 24th of September. Genome sequencing on the staff member working at the Christchurch Managed Isolation Facility and who was tested positive yesterday is expected later today. So in closing comments about this case, it's a reminder that our ongoing low number of cases in New Zealand compared with what is happening globally, where we can see um, significant increases in infection uh, in many countries. I understand that there is uh, uh, intense public interest in each individual case here and it's just important to bear in mind as I've said before, the virus is the problem. People are not the problem. They are the solution, and we have seen that here once again with this very dedicated worker who, despite having had a negative test a couple of days before, sought another test uh, once they became symptomatic. Finally, on the New Zealand COVID tracer, we now have 2,337,200 registered user users. Uh, we've released a minor update to the app to make it easier for app users to find the nearest COVID-19 testing centre when needed. Uh, simply open the app dashboard and tap the view resources button that is part of the more information tile uh, and that will take you to uh, an up-to-date list of testing centres. The app will automatically update over the next day or two for most users and if you want to manually update the instructions are on the Ministry of Health website. Thank you Minister. Thank you. Happy to open up for questions. Yeah. Um, do you have any more specific details about the role of the health worker and do you have any leads on how they got COVID? Uh, they're a member of the health team there. I'm trying to strike a balance here between providing as much information as possible but also respecting the privacy of the individual. We're working very hard to find out where the source of the infection might be. Obviously we're very interested um, to see if there was a, 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 um, a breach of the infection prevention control protocol because uh, we also want to make sure, and that's why we're testing other people who were on the shift with that person. Uh, and 
uh, over and above the regular testing that's already happening to see if there is any, uh, are any other cases. It's possible we will find other cases, and if so, we will report that immediately. When did, when did the time? Ministry learn about the countdown visit? Uh, we learnt about the countdown visit late yesterday afternoon. Yes. The original message was that the staff was, had begun self-isolating from Saturday, so what changed there? Sorry, that the staff the member... The message from the Ministry was that the yes. staff had begun self-isolating from Saturday. Yes, so um, I think our early information was, uh, and uh, what we've tried, what we try to do now is release information as soon as we have it available. Our early information was that the person had uh, self-isolated, in, in other words, not gone to work, uh, but then they had the symptoms had started to develop further on Sunday, so that's when they sought a test. But in the meantime, there had been this outing that had included the visit to um, the countdown supermarket. And as I say, the critical thing here is time. So we want to get the, the notification out around any places where there may have been some exposure to the individual while they're infectious, uh, so that people can isolate if needs be and uh, be tested. Yeah, Come on, back, back here. Over what time period had those 20 people signed into countdown? It's a very low number. Uh, so that was during the, the approximate hour period that um, when the individual made, uh, who's now the case, had made the visit there. It is a low number. Uh, we also had a low number at the pub that was involved in the, um, the case in Auckland a couple of weeks ago. And again, this is just an important reminder to people, this is an incredibly important part of our overall response to, keep, to scan in and keep that record. So please keep doing so. Why Should businesses be encouraging as... people to sign in? Uh, yes, and in fact, that's the message we've been giving. Uh, the, there are two things businesses can do. Make the QR code very visible and make it easy for people to um, scan it. And also, yes, uh, there's, uh, I, I, I would encourage businesses to actively encourage people to scan in. Yeah. The point is that the woman went to Countdown even though she was... Well, oh, look, I don't um, have a particular view on that. I'm not close enough to know exactly what the movements were and what her, what her movements were and what the symptoms were at that time. But your message to the public is if you have symptoms, don't go. Well, uh, the, the broad message, of course, is if you have symptoms, don't go to work uh, and seek a test. Why is that worker self-isolating at home and not in a facility? Uh, the requirement to isolate in a facility is not a strict requirement, and it's, uh, it depends on the uh, judgment of the local medical officer of health. I think there, are, there, are, there is a high level of confidence that I share with the Medical Officer of Health that the person will be self-isolating rigorously. And secondly, um, it it's also allows the... We also take into account in each case the personal and family circumstances of the individual. So it's nothing to do with a capacity issue at the facility? No. Um, Extra testing stations are being set up in Christchurch. Well, we have the existing testing stations. There's uh, obviously the two community-based assessment centres, and the DHB will be standing up some pop-up testing as well. And once we know the locations and, and um, hours of those uh, from tomorrow, we will make that public. And is the ministry satisfied with how procedures have gone here? Is, is, is anything different with the way that the Sudema uh, facility is managed, or is it also as per? Look, uh, it, it, the Sedema uh, is unique in the Christchurch setting in that it has both the managed isolation and quarantine um, parts of the facility. The same protocols, infection prevention control procedures apply in every facility. What I would say is that, again, this is the system working, and I was just reading some commentary from Professor Nick Wilson that um, labelled this as yet another border failure. I don't agree with him. Uh, what we have to remember here is that the border it does not finish at the airport or the port now. It extends effectively into our managed isolation facilities. And so people do not enter the New Zealand community until they have completed that period of time in the managed isolation facility. I think this is another example of, if you think about the thousands of people who are both in facilities and transiting through there and the thousands of staff working there, this is another example of the system working well to protect our border. If I could note too that the infection prevention and control in our managed isolation facilities has been audited twice now. Um, each time you know, potential improvements have been identified and they have been actioned. There is no such thing as a 100% foolproof system, which is something that you've heard us say many, many times. We're always looking for areas where we can improve. Um, the feedback that I have had and I have seen it in my own visits, the staff go to great lengths to keep themselves and the, those around them safe. 
Um, but COVID-19 is ultimately a virus, and uh, we all have to be prepared for the fact that from time to time, um, viruses spread, despite the very best uh, protective measures put in place. Um, and so we need to be able to respond quickly. And that is why things like the COVID Tracer app uh, are very, very important. It is why uh, people taking personal responsibility, as this person did, um, to keep themselves isolated when they need to, to seek testing when they need to. Uh, these are all very important things. Dr. 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 Nick Wilson, though, he said that, that you know, those prevention measures exist so that workers can go to work and not get infected, and these several workers have become infected. There was the, you know, the, the lift worker, the port worker, um, and then this worker. Um, Surely, uh, you know, a successful uh, yeah. control would mean that those workers are... I'll get the, the Director-General, of course, I, I know we want to comment on this as well, but the comment I would make is in every one of those cases we've learned something new. You know, who would have thought that the lift, a lift button, something as simple as a lift button, could be a source of tra you know, transmission? Um, so further protective measures were put in place following that. All of the time, whenever something like this happens, we look and we say... Is there something we can do to build in an extra layer of protection? And then we take action on that. We've done two separate audits of infection prevention and control, each one of them identifying potential improvements, and each one of those, um, you know, we've had a series of actions following on from that. And we keep doing that. This is a system that we'll have to keep learning. Every time something happens, we look at it and say, could we, could we do more to prevent that happening again in the future? Just a follow-up comment there, if I may, Minister. I, look, again, if we think about the number of people who have been through, over 60,000, for 14 uh, days, each of them in there, and the number of interactions there will be between those um, uh, returning uh, Kiwis and the fantastic staff who are working across over 30 facilities, um, the, no, nothing will be 100% uh, foolproof. And as the Minister said, we're constantly reviewing, constantly improving, and there is no one who is keener to be protected from the virus than the people who are working in the facilities. Yes, yes, we are planning to. Another, another issue. Have you released another... the Simpson, Heather Simpson, Sir Brian Marsh? Uh, yes, well, we, we will release that as well. Obviously, we, um, uh, we needed a chance to digest that and to consider it. Um, and in this post-election period, that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, and then we will, uh, we will certainly be releasing that. We need to be more transparent. Wilson. Another issue raised by Nick Wilson uh, is that the crews at Sudema are double bunking. Is that appropriate? So that was an arrangement that was agreed, uh, and uh, this was the first time that had been done. Uh, it uh, is something that ha will, will be reviewed, certainly before we uh, receive the next tranche of crew members who come in. I should say that um, the cooperation from the crew in the facility, all the reports I have, they've been very cooperative, very understanding of what is required of them. And of course, um, whenever a case is identified, then the crew members who have been in the same room are, um, are under close observation and treated as close contacts, and several of the follow-up cases have come from there. I should also point out that we do have families together as units already, so it's not uncommon for there to be more than one person uh, in a room in a managed isolation facility. The next tranche, the tranche. next tranche was due to arrive on Monday in Christchurch. Is that still happening? My understanding is that they have agreed to delay um, the further flight until we give them the OK to do that, um, and we have not done that yet. So what sort of time frame are you talking there? Uh, look, at this point, we've, we've got a little bit to do in the next 24 to 48 hours um, before decisions are made about when when space may be freed up through the release of the people who are currently occupying those spaces. Um, so it's a bit... I can't give a specific time frame at this point. How big is that tranche that's due to come in? Uh, I don't have a number on the, the, the number expected. We'd, you know, it'd, it'd be similar probably in size to the, the previous um, group that came in. Uh, it'll be another charter flight, basically. Did the, did the, did the, did the worker use the COVID tracer app before, during and after visiting the supermarket? Uh, I couldn't say that. However, um, it's usually just once it's required uh, on the way in. But I don't have that information. Did they not visit anywhere else? On the Heather Simpson and Sir Brian report... Don't you need to be more transparent with the public and get that report out there as soon as possible? Um, yes, look, we will release it. The Director-General himself has not had a chance to look at that yet. It arrived um, not long before the election, um, and obviously we, we need a chance to consider that. I need a chance to discuss it with my colleagues. I need a chance to discuss it with the people um, wh whose work it, it covers, um, and we will certainly do that. We're not going to, to waste time in doing that, um, and we will then release that. A couple What's of your weeks ago there was this trio of um, sort of cases related to the port, uh, and there was a question around whether one of them had been infected by being within a metre of, of the other for just a three-minute period. 
Is there any more sort of life been shined on that in the intervening period about how that person might have been infected and whether it was from that very short duration of exposure? From memory, this was persons, persons A, B, and C. Um, and, and in fact, you may recall that, that um, additional information um, about the exposure between those three people was gained as as the, the case investigation went along. But I haven't got the most recent up-to-date on that, but the Director General may have. Thanks, Minister. So I, I've asked the team in the next 48 hours or so to, to just report back on a, a much uh, the detailed forensic sort of examination of the interactions in particular that the workers who went on board the ship, the Savannah Seville, uh, had with crew, because we're very keen to find out exactly which interaction or which circumstance may have led to the infection. Um, originally, uh, so part of that could be to do with the fact that it may be that both of the workers who had been on the ship became infected at, at the same point in time, and that one or other of them infected the other uh, person in the company, uh, not, and it wasn't just through that uh, very brief interaction on the Friday morning that the, the worker, uh, the um, original case became unwell and then sought a test. Is there any update on the potential timeline for the rollout of Bluetooth contact tracing to the COVID tracer app? No, we have, um, uh, as you'll be familiar, my colleague Chris Farfoy has been um, working on that. Um, there are some trials um, that he's been working his way through. Um, that's something that I'll be picking up uh, after Friday uh, when all of this gets formalised. I haven't had a chance to look in detail at that yet. Um, but uh, I think the couple of messages here, though. Um, one is uh, there's no such thing as a silver bullet. Um, a COVID card or a Bluetooth technology solution may well be part of the toolbox, um, but there is li unlikely to be one single thing that's going to end up being the absolute, you know, um, the absolute answer here. The key message for everybody at home is if you suddenly found that you had to do your contact tracing for the last fortnight, could you do it? If you can't, what are you doing to change that? Are you going to use the QR code more frequently? That would certainly be my recommendation at this point. Are you keeping, you know, we've got a booklet for some of our senior citizens who prefer not to use the QR code. Everybody should be keeping some kind of record so that if they need to do contact tracing, they can. The other concern about how much further this might have spread, especially given testing centres aren't as busy as they once were. Uh, look, uh, testing rates, we'd like to see our testing numbers go up. We we're still looking reasonably healthy. I mean, we've done 30, over 34,000 tests in the last seven days. So that's a reasonably healthy um, rate, you know, testing range for, for where we're at in terms of our risk profile. Um, dropped down a little bit in the last couple of days. We're from a high of about um, 7,500 uh, that we were looking at, it, it's dropped down a little bit. So, you know, we'd be looking to try and get those uh, numbers uh, up a little bit. But, uh, you know, we've got to look overall at the week. You do see, you know, peaks and, and troughs during the week. Um, I think our testing numbers are still looking reasonably healthy, though. Are you hearing out any more about the that. decision about when to release the fishermen that are there at the moment? What will decide that, whether they stay or whether they go? And it's 24 hours. But one of the things that I'll, I'll be looking at um, is what, what more do we know about the, this most recent um, case, uh, where the source of infection might have been, um, does that bring anything else up that might cause us pause for thought uh, around the release of others? You know, could there have been any other uh, cross-contamination or cross-infection there, if you like? So those are the sorts of questions that we'll be getting into uh, once we've got a bit more information about this current case. There, there are concerns that, given the size of Kashmir School, the horse may have already bolted. Are those concerns valid? I, I can comment. So just to, rec uh, to recall, there's the one household contact who is a student at Kashmir, that person was tested yesterday and was test and has already tested negative and is now in isolation. So, again, it's a message of reassurance to that community um, that the right steps have been taken and it's just a matter of being aware. There's no sense that any horse has bolted here. Remember, we've got the one case at the moment and the household and work close contacts are all being tested. OK, we'll come back to that. Should the school the limitations on managed isolation spaces, is that due to a shortage of health staff? And if so, how many more health staff are needed? Uh, look, that's something that um, Megan Woods has been handling up until this point, and her and I haven't had a, a chance to have a proper handover of that yet. We'll certainly do that in the next sort of 48 hours or so. Um, we do manage carefully. We, want, we don't want to have a whole lot of beds empty if we don't need them to, to be empty, but we also do need to allow a little bit of a buffer there too. Um, so there's a variety of things that we need to keep in, in mind. Um, there are a variety of things that constrain our ability to continually expand the system. Um, 
suitable accommodation is one of them, so um, not every hotel makes a suitable managed isolation facility. Workforce is one of them. Um, and bearing in mind that workforce is not just about the isolation, but it's also about the escalation if you need to escalate. So if you end up with, as we have at the Sedema, a, a series of positive cases, you've got to have the workforce that can escalate the response where that's required as well. So those are all things that, that I know um, the team have been very carefully managing. Um, this is not an unlimited workforce, um, so we don't have an abundance of, of trained and registered nurses, for example, across the country sitting around with not much to do. Generally, nurses are pretty well deployed around the country. So um, we do have to work within those workforce constraints, but I'll, I'll be getting into that a little bit more. Is there any um, proactive asymptomatic testing of those countdown workers happening currently? Not at this point in time, no. So uh, they may well choose to be tested, uh, as may uh, those who were in the supermarket at the time. There will, be pro there will be active testing of anyone who's identified through the CCTV footage as having had interaction with the case um, as, a, as a precautionary measure. Dr. Right, Dr. Last couple, last couple of questions. Dr. Bloomfield, how do you feel about being a finalist for TV Personality of the Year at the TV Awards? <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, it's... I'm, I'm very humbled, and uh, let's just see how, what, what rolls uh, with that one. Have, have, have you ever wanted to be a TV star? Uh, <laughs> it's not something I dreamt about in my childhood, or my adulthood for that matter. Would All right, we'll go, we'll go to Derek and then Anna, and we'll wrap it up there. Would you then classify the risk of spread of the countdown to be very low, and did the health worker uh, scan in using the tracer app at the countdown? So I'm not sure about the scanning, and I uh, uh, responded to that earlier on. I think the uh, uh, yes, we would categorise the risk. We have seen, remember, uh, recalling those cases we had um, a couple of weeks ago, where actually someone was at a pub with a group for some time, and we haven't, we didn't um, get any further infections there. Remembering that was in that case in the sort of. Uh, asymptomatic period. Um, so likewise, uh, the gym setting there, and we have seen this previously, you'll recall that when we had a case amongst a, a health worker at the Jet Parker a number of weeks ago, that that person had also been to a gym. Again, we saw no onward transmission. So our experience is that this is low risk with that sort of tr those transient interactions with people. Not that I'm aware of, but if we do find any other places, we'll of course make that public immediately. Lucky Will Shmere School be taking any additional precautions? Uh, the main precaution is the advice given to parents, which is just keep an eye out for symptoms and actually do everything that every New Zealander should be doing at the moment. Not going to school or work if unwell, use the app and seek a test if you have symptoms. Have we become too complacent on mask use and on signing in? Go on, you, Minister. You, well, y yes. Um, I would say yes, particularly on the signing in and contact tracing. We have seen quite a significant drop off in the number of people who are using the QR code system to record their movements. Um, it is a very effective way for us to be able to notify people if there is any heightened risk for them. Um, and that only really works if people are using it regularly and scanning in. And I think, um, you know, I've, in, in my travels out and about, I've certainly um, scanned codes that a lot of people have been walking past. And I think if everybody just lifts their game there a little bit, um, it will be um, a, a really helpful tool for us. That's what it's designed to be. Um, so, yes, I'd like people to be doing that more. I think that, you know, coming back to it, and we've talked a lot about this over the last 10 months or so, but the basic preventative measures that everybody can do are still remain the most important, which is, you know, good hand hygiene, um, coughing into your elbow, Wearing a mask when you're on public transport, staying home if you're sick, uh, getting a test if you show any COVID-19 symptoms at all, all of these things are the, are the basic things that every New Zealander can do to keep us all safe. Do you want to see people wearing a mask on public transport? Uh, yes, I'd certainly recommend it. Okay. Okay. Can I just make one comment further on the QR codes? Because the, uh, the, the QR code approach that we took um, got a bit of a bad rap in early days. Uh, can I just say that a number of countries are adopting this approach, including Singapore, which you will recall went down a Bluetooth track early on, uh, different approaches in different Australian states, but New South Wales is effectively following the same approach we are taking, the NHS in the UK, South Korea. So um, there are other jurisdictions that are looking and seeing that this is a, an approach and a technology that actually has real benefits. It's 
different from Bluetooth technology, so saying we are still looking at uh, Bluetooth, adding Bluetooth functionality to the, the app here, and uh, hoping to have more information about that uh, in the next few weeks. Having said, I was, my last comment was my last one. Actually, I've got one more, um, which is that businesses uh, are enjoying an enormous amount of freedom to trade at Alert Level 1. Uh, and those businesses can all play a role in making sure New Zealand stays at Alert Level 1 and they continue to be able to operate in that way. And making sure they're prominently displaying the QR code and encouraging their patrons to be using it to scan in and to keep good records is one of those things that they can do to ensure that their business can continue to operate by ensuring that the country remains at Alert Level 1. Mandate that businesses have to say to customers, here's our QR code. So at the moment, businesses do have to display a, a QR code. Um, again, I would encourage them to display that prominently, so don't put it in the corner, put it right at the front door, put multiple copies of it up so that if you've got multiple, multiple people entering at one time, they can all scan in easily. Um, do those sorts of things. If you're a bouncer on the door of a bar, tell people to scan as they're coming in. Do those basic preventative measures um, and then we're far less likely to be dealing with a more widespread outbreak in the future which might change the, the level of freedom that we're all enjoying. Thank you everybody.